bunch of hydraulics on it. So I get questions all the time about my wood stickers. What size are they? What species, etc. I'm going to tell you guys, I don't make these here at my sawmill because they got a barcode on them. Let me explain real fast. So stickers, if you think about a definition of it, if you're new to this channel, it's the little strips of wood that you put between green pieces of wood that come off the sawmill for drying. That way you get airflow all around your boards. If you don't use these, you're dead stacking your lumber and it's not gonna dry properly. It's gonna have mold on it. You're gonna have a mess. So stickers is something that you have to use. And some people saw their own stickers and there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm not saying my way is the best, but it has worked for me for the past 10 years. These are, what's the dimensions on it right here? Cause I know what size they are, but Lowe's says these are one by twos. They're eight feet long and I cannot remember how much I pay for these. I'm not bought any in a couple of years because used to, I would go to Lowe's or Home Depot and I would grab a pack of these or several packs every time I went. And I think you get like maybe five or 10 to a bundle, more so 10. I think there's like 10 to a bundle, maybe more. And I would just grab a few bundles every time I went to Lowe's for anything. And over the years, I have built up a good inventory of stickers. Now these are one by two by eight, which means they're three quarter by inch and a half. And I cut them down to four feet long because that's the size of my stats of lumber. Now there's several advantages and disadvantages of buying your own stickers and not making them. The advantages are, these are done. You go buy them and you're pretty much finished. Put them on the chop saw, cut them down to size and you got stickers. Another advantage is they're dry. They're probably about 12 to 14% moisture content. They're not gonna be eight. Most wood at Lowe's is not 8%. It's probably about 12 to 14, maybe 12, but uh, at least they're dry. Another advantage is the size of them. So if you mill up your own stickers and let's say you're cutting one by twos, well, they're going to shrink as they dry with your stack of lumber. These have already been kiln dry. They're going to gain some moisture and release it, but the overall size of them isn't going to change that much. And that's real important on your stats of lumber because you don't want your stickers shrinking because those movements and how it changes the stack of your lumber will change how flat your boards are. It's the only disadvantage I can think of, you gotta buy them. But for the price of these, if I had to saw this down by the log, run it through the kiln, run it through the molder to make it an exact dimension, I couldn't, I couldn't do it for this cheap right here. There's no way. And I'm not sure what these are selling for, but there's no way I could go through that whole process here at my sawmill and do it any cheaper than Lowe's can. That's why people ask all the time, why don't you get into selling two by fours for like building houses and stuff? Well, there's a few problems that. The first problem is it's gotta be graded and heat treated and stamped to be used for housing in my county because we have a lot of building codes here. And number two, I would never beat Home Depot or Lowe's on their price. There's no way. Those guys do a mass production on two by fours. I can never come at their price point and make any money. I could probably not even charge what they're charging. I'd probably go in the hole. But as far as stickers go, I think this is the best way to go. And some people use these fluted stickers. I'll try to find a picture of it here. And they say they work better. I've never used them before, but I think I might try them one day.
So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. It's been about three days since we unloaded this mower off the trailer. I planned on using it that day, but some rain moved in and it rained all night. But I think it's dried up enough today to where we can test this thing out and see how it works. Some of you may have missed the video about a month ago when I went and picked this up at the shipping yard. And if you did, here's a brief description of what we're looking at. This is a finish mower and it articulates and you pull it behind of your tractor. It runs off power takeoff. It also has hydraulics as well. This is made by Last Tech. It's a company up in Indianapolis. And there's also something else interesting about Last Tech that I bet you guys didn't know. So Last Tech, which is an American company, this attachment is made in America up in Indianapolis. And it's also owned by a parent company named Woodmiser. You guys may have heard of them before. So now I'm gonna get my chainsaw and get rid of this crate. I think there's a little bit of assembly I have to do on this side, putting on the uh, three-point hitch so we can hook it up to the tractor. But other than that, and bringing the tractor over, this shouldn't take too long. But since this is on YouTube, everything takes about 10 times longer than you plan on it. Never fails. <laughs> Friends, we got it uncrated and it looks pretty good. Everything's there. Got some extra blades. I got the assembly for the three point hitch. They also included the PTO shaft right there. So we are ready for assembly, but before we do that, I got to do one thing. This mower has a bunch of hydraulics on it. It's got, let me see, I think three hydraulic cylinders. And they sent the hoses with it, but they did not send the connectors that go to your tractor. And the reason being, everybody's got different tractors out there. They sell these mowers worldwide, so they rely on the customer to figure out what connectors they need and put those on. And I need Pioneer connectors for these, so let's run up here to Napa and go grab a set and we'll come back, hook up this mower, and we should be mowing by this afternoon. You guys hang in there. All right, friends, I'm back from Napa. I had to buy two bushings and one of the Pioneer couplers. I got these installed, so we're ready to go on the hydraulics. So on the mower, the only thing we need to do now is install the lift arms right there on the sides, on the very front of it. And I noticed just a second ago, it came with some extra blades right there. I believe they're bolted down to the pallet. Need to get those off there as well. But that's pretty much it. We'll bring the 754 up here and hook it up. And hopefully here in about 30 minutes, we'll start mowing. So we got that on there. Now I need to put two of these draw bar pins on them, just like this. And I have one problem with these that I will fix here in just a second. This is for a category one tractor. So, I gotta get some bushings and I got those up in the shop to make this part right here a little bit thicker cause the 754 tractor is a category two and this is a category one. If I had more time today, I'd probably go to tractor supply and just go ahead and buy a category two pin and install it. I might do that later on, but since I'm running out of daylight, I need to get mowing. So we'll grab some bushings. I should have some bushings up here in the hardware store. Keyword is should. If I don't, I'll probably go ahead and order me about 20 of them to have them on hand all the time 
then go to Tractor Supply and pay their high prices and get a few for today. But I think I got some. All right, friends, right here is my hardware store. And it's kind of small, but I'm adding to it every day. This is my assortment of boltsandnuts.com. Not sponsored by them, but I've been buying these drawers about once a month and adding to my collection right there. I'm getting a pretty good assortment of those. And this little red metal case right here is probably my favorite organizer. I got this off Facebook Marketplace for $50. Man, it was a steal. And I keep my bushings and all my hydraulic connectors in here. And there they are. And look at there. I got two of them. Actually, I got more toward the back. I thought I had more than that though. I'll probably go ahead and order a case of these so I got them on hand. I hate not having what I need when I need it. Real fast, this is how this works. Here's our draw pin for category one. Here's our category two adapter. It goes over that and that's all you gotta do. Real simple. All right, friends, I think we're just about done here. Hook up these two hydraulic hoses, get the uh, PTO shaft off the back of it, and we should be ready to bring the tractor over and hook this up. Guys, I got it hooked up. Now off camera, I went ahead and did some stuff that's not really exciting. I got the hydraulic lines hooked up to the rear remote on the tractor and the PTO shaft. It also came with this spring that's pretty neat right there. That way you can tie these up and keep them out of the wheels and out of everything going on down here. That's a really nice feature. I was worried about those lines laying down. And a few features here, I can't remember the specs on this. I'll put it right here as far as the width of the cut. And these tires on it are actually solid. So if you go over, you know, a nail or anything like that, you're in good shape. They don't hold air, so that's good right there. And I've also not adjusted the height on the deck. You can do that with these spacers on the wheels. But I'm not sure if I want to adjust it any at all. I may leave it like that. I'll have to mow with it maybe half an acre or so and take a look at the cut and see if I want to go any lower or not. But other than that, I think we're ready to mow guys. I take that back. I got a loose hydraulic line right there. I can see some fluid coming out right there. Need to tighten that down just a little bit more. And then we should be good to go and do a test run on the hydraulics. Make sure everything's working right. Now, most YouTube channels wouldn't have showed you that, but here on my channel, I like to keep it real and show you guys my mistakes because I make plenty of them. Let's do a test run on the hydraulics. Make sure I fix that leak and everything's working right. guys that right there is the travel position so if you need to take this mower to another property down the roadway you do that now we're lower it back down and there we go looks pretty good let me go down here and check that hydraulic leak and make sure i fix that
was going to try to mow over here, but it's still pretty wet from the rain we got a few days ago. We got about a half an inch of rain a couple of days ago. And I know the grass is high and it needs mowed, but it's just so wet right now. I could mow it, but the 754, that tractor weighs about 8,000 pounds. And that will tear the yard up pretty bad. I think we'll hold off on this probably for a couple more weeks till it dries up some. We got some more rain coming tomorrow, they say. All right, friends, here's what we're looking at. I mowed a strip right there. I didn't mow that right there just yet. I'll probably get that before we're done. And I mowed two strips on the other side of this grass right here that needs mowed. And judging by the width that I can make with that mower on one pass, it will take me four passes with my other mower. Primary mower is a T25 uh, subcompact tractor with a uh, 60 inch deck on it and it does fine, but it takes about an hour to mow this acre. Friends, with two more passes, this acre will be done and I'll probably have it out here for maybe 10 or 15 minutes mowing it. If I wanna have the video camera going, I think I can mow this in probably five to 10 minutes, maybe faster.